Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. We're a long way from running out of gold. There's still a good reason to buy it, though. Let's explore! This comes to us from Bloomberg. Amazingly, I was able to actually get into the site today. And it's about gold. And even though we're not going to be running out of it anytime soon, there's a good reason to purchase the yellow metal. There's one potential reason to add some more bullion coins or bars to your investment portfolio. They're not making any more of them. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, is they will be making more of them. This is why we're not going to be running out of gold anytime soon. And it's not an investment, but I've talked about that before. All the gold that's ever been mined would fit into a cube with edges 22 meters long, small enough to fit into three Olympic-sized swimming pools. Each year, miners, pawnbrokers add another 4,000 to 5,000 metric tons to an existing 197,576-ton pile. But jewelry demand alone uses up about half of that. Yeah, that's interesting. So look at there. So can you dig it? This is a an interesting chart here, dynamic chart that shows world's mines need to keep producing gold to keep up with demand. We can see mine production net of hedging, recycled gold, jewelry, technology, private investment, and central banks. You can see that private investment was quite down between 2013 and 2015. It picked up greatly in 2016. But even as such, here in 2019, it's taken a bit of a dip from 2016 and earlier in 2011 and 12. Fascinating indeed. And central bank holdings are up. With the metal hitting a record of $2,075 a troy ounce in August, the concern we're heading towards peak gold has reared its head again. The industry needs to commission 8 million ounces of projects by 2025 to maintain last year's production levels. Consultants Wood McKenzie wrote in June, requiring some $37 billion of capital investment. Mine production fell last year for the first time in more than a decade. Even the British Broadcasting Corporation has been asking whether we're at risk of running out. At the core of this concern, is a long-standing trend in the gold mining industry. The percentage of gold in ore reserves is falling from more than 10 grams per ton in the late 60s to barely 1 gram per ton nowadays. Those concentrations are extraordinarily low, equivalent to grinding up and separating a Statue of Liberty's worth of ore to recover a teaspoon of precious metal. At some point, the grade must get so poor that it becomes impossible to recover the gold economically. The thing is, we don't know when that will be, and all the evidence indicates that we're still a long way from finding out. The New Cast Mining Limited Sadia or Cadia East Mine, 200 kilometers or 124 miles to the west of Sydney, the grade there is just 0.45 grams per ton. That's less than a half a gram per ton, more than two Statue of Liberty's worth per teaspoon. And yet the mine is one of the world's most profitable, with costs of $160 per ounce. That gives you an idea of what it costs to take it out of the ground, which would deliver a margin of more than 90% at current gold prices. So that's fascinating. So that's the, uh, what it costs to mine the metal itself and the profits that they would take at current spot prices. Fascinating indeed. So here's another chart that shows making the grade. Many of the world's most productive gold mines have strikingly low reserve grades. This is interesting indeed. Look at the uh, Lolo Quintego in Ghana. It's 4.4 grams per metric ton. That is quite telling. And then in, in Gates, uh, Tanzania, at 3.5. Carlin, U.S., none of these are top mines, I think. Uh, well, that I know that I'm, from the previous video, I talked about the top mining 
uh, gold mining uh, organs, uh, mines in the world. Look at that. 0.5 in KD Australia is the lowest there. Two factors drive it. One is e economies of scale. Sadie is one of the world's top 10 mines measured by output. Since the dawn of the mining industry, grades of almost every mineral have been falling because, by definition, the highest grade, most easily discovered resources are the ones that get exploited first. Makes perfect sense. The growth of the sector has always depended um, upon better, higher volume extracted technologies offsetting this fact. That's something to consider here. The place where so many of the highest grade major gold deposits are still found, South Africa, is increasingly a backwater. And maybe that's why it didn't rank in that list. That's because it's simply so difficult to extract ore from sweltering tunnels kilometers underground using hand-operated tools. By comparison, the immense blasting and dump truck operations used to exploit lower-grade mines in Siberia, Oceania, and Nevada are far more efficient. Open pit mining. The other factor is that most gold doesn't occur on its own. Indeed, the best deposits globally are porphyry, which is a, a mineral that is also one of the world's biggest sources of copper. The operator of the world's biggest gold mine isn't a gold miner at all, but copper producer Freeport McMoran, Incorporated, whose Grasberg pit in the Indonesian side of New Guinea produced nearly twice as much gold in 2018 as its nearest rival, Peleus PJSC's Olympiada. At Newcast Sadia, Arcadia, production costs are so low because for every ounce of gold that is mined, you get about a 309 pounds of copper, worth 900 bucks or so at current prices. So gold is a byproduct of other mining too. Copper mining in this case. While the issue of mine depletion highlighted by Wood McKenzie are real, High gold prices like those we're seeing at the moment are exactly the circumstances that will encourage more exploration and development activity to make up the shortfall. Though people have been digging up gold for seven millennia, it is constantly being discovered in the most unexpected places. So this is an interesting chart here. About half the gold that's ever been mined has been dug up since 1976. Wow, look at that. Some more discoveries. 4,000 metric tons is the top bar here. And in 2019, we had 3.3 thousand metric tons. Mining of this yellow metal in Australia's Victoria state all but ceased a century ago after the veins that drove its nation-building 19th century gold rush were tapped out. Then, in 2015, Kirkland Lake Gold Limited discovered a new ore body near its Unispring Forestville mine site and realized it was sitting on top of one of the world's highest grade deposits, causing its market capitalization to grow nearly a hundredfold in five years. There you go, look at that and look at it on the chart, how much it's increased. Amazing. The same year, a unit of Zhaojian mining industry uh, company discovered a new deposit two kilometers below the surface of the Bohai Sea off the coast of northeast China's Shandong province. With some 212 metric tons of proven and probable reserves, it's now one of the world's largest gold deposits. Amazing. Amazing. There's no reason to think this trend is about to break. About half the world's gold has been mined since 1976. And if anything, the pace is accelerating as grades fall. Worldwide, gold production is up about a third over the past decade. Far more than the 15% increase in oil output. This, the best reason for investing in gold is still that it provides diversification to an investment portfolio. Not that the world doesn't have enough of it. One day, we may run out of gold. We're a long, long way from that moment now. So if we take this for face value for what it's worth, 
from the, from the data, from the chart, and the like. Well, that tells you, I think, two things. Number one is that why the price hasn't increased much more dramatically than it has, and why the price is so high right now, given the fact that more the gold has been discovered. I think it also is an argument, number two, against manipulation, long-term manipulation, because we are fulfilling the needs of gold out there. And so therefore, when you had over half of it being mined since 1976, and by this chart we can see a great amount being um, produced since 2008, or eight especially here, and been an upwards trend since then, then this tells us that the reason why gold has been low is because all this gold mining that has been meeting the demand of the central bankers and industry and and uh, jewelry and and uh, other other things. So uh, yeah, it's fascinating indeed. And imagine what the silver numbers would be. Probably the same thing. You know, we have seen a great vast amount of silver and gold production in general since 1900. So there you have it. Fascinating story indeed. Indeed it is here as we look at this article here from October 1st, 2020, which is the date, by the way, that the Gold Eagle and Silver Eagle reverse designs were unveiled by the U.S. Mint. I posted a story about that if you get a chance to check it out. Um, I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and encourage you to please rate share, comment, and subscribe.